Um, let's take a look at example four here. Um, looking at it term by term, um, we have x squared. We know how to handle that when we find its derivative. Um, notice that this term right here is different than what we've seen so far um, in that it has both x and y in that term as factors. So we have two variable factors here. Uh, whereas this term right here just has a y in it. It's not a product of two factors. So as you might have guessed, yes, we're going to have to use the product rule on this term. So it just becomes a management issue because um, it would be easy to get lost in the problem. But let's try and stay organized in our work and, and show each step, and I think that will keep us um, focused. Okay, so again, our objective in this problem, although not written, is to find the derivative. But we need to learn how to handle this product, and that's really the focus of this example. Right, the derivative of x squared, of course, is 2x. All right, right here, ooh, it gets kind of tricky, especially with this minus 2. Uh, so we have to be real careful here. I'm going to go ahead and put the minus down for the subtraction. And then I'm going to focus on this term right here. And I'm going to focus on 3x being the first factor. I just usually put the coefficient, the constant multiplier, with the first variable. And I'll look at the second variable. And I go, oh, that's two different variables. So I'm going to think of this as f. 3x and g would be my y. So I'm going to do the product rule okay, on these factors. So I think the best thing you can do for yourself here is I encourage you to put in a bracket because this negative sign has to distribute through the terms of our product rule. All right, so we've got the minus here. Let's look at the first. So it's the first factor left alone times the derivative of y with respect to x times dy dx. We're in the product rule, that's plus, that's the operation, plus the second factor y times the derivative of 3x with respect to x. So that's going to be just 3. I'm going to close the bracket because I'm finished. I'm finished with this term here, and that subtraction has to run through both these terms. So moving on to the next term, that derivative is minus 14y times dy dx, and then we have equals 0. All right, notice we have two terms with dy dx in it, so we're going to have to isolate those, move all of the terms to the other side. Okay, but first I need to do the necessary algebra here and distribute this negative. So it's going to be minus 3x dy dx, also minus 3y. Oh, I need a y. Okay, so at this point, this term is going to stay on the left side of the equation. This term is going to stay because they both share the common factor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this term and this term right here, these two terms right here, to the other side. Okay. So we're going to have negative 2x plus 3y on the right side of the equation. And the whole reason we do that is so that we can remove, factor out, if you will, the common factor dy dx. So factoring it out leaves negative 3x minus 14y. As a final step, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by this quantity. Okay, so what we have here. is our derivative. And barring any mistakes, that should be it. I think that is it. So notice that it's pretty complicated there. But um, again, just a real quick reminder, you cannot change these two signs. You can't cancel those two signs out because you have to pull the sign out from everything. Okay. All right. So that's um, practicing using the product rule. All right. We're going to look at another example where we're going to differentiate implicitly, and that's going to involve the product rule. All right, so I'm going to bring in the derivative operator. And as I write down each of these terms of this implicitly defined equation, uh, I'm going to pay attention to when the variables agree and don't agree and just kind of get a plan uh, building here. And then, of course, with this last term right here, we can see it's a, a, a product of a couple of factors, so that's going to require the product rule. All right.
let's apply this derivative operator here to the left side of the equation. Notice the variables do not agree. Proceed with the normal power rule, 6y. But remember, multiply by the rate of change of y with respect to x minus, all right, bringing in um, the derivative operator here. And let me make an adjustment. Let me make this, um, let's just say a cube power here. Let's make this a cube uh, and make a cube here. All right, finding the derivative of minus 2x cubed results in 6x squared. Traveling across the equal sign, derivative of the constant term is 0. I'm going to go ahead and put 0 there. All right, and then kind of getting my plan together here, I have a product of factors. And so I have a minus. It would be nice if it was plus. They have subtraction. So I'm going to go ahead and build a bracket and put the minus outside of it. Then I'm going to focus my attention on perhaps this being my f factor and this being my g factor. Jumping into the product rule, it's the first factor times the derivative with respect to x of the second factor. We'll come back and take care of that later. Plus, part of the product rule, the second factor y cubed times the derivative with respect to x of 2x squared. All right, so we have a little bit of calculation to do here, so I'm just going to bring this down along, along the way. 6y dy dx, and again, you can use y prime. Uh, it's alternate notation, y prime, but again, like I said, I'm thinking that's y to the first. Minus 6x squared equals. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple things here. I'm going to distribute the negative, but at the same time perform the operation of differentiation. So I'm going to have minus 2x squared all right, distributing that here, and then this derivative will be times 3y squared, variables disagree, times dy dx. So this 2x squared here, negative 2x squared, it could have been put in parentheses. It's all of this make up that term. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back here and distribute that negative. I have y cubed. And I'm going to use parentheses. I might take them off later, but right now I'm going to use parentheses. Perform this calculation, and that's just going to be 4x. The variables agree. All right, um, let's see a little cleanup here. 6y dy dx. Okay, my objective here is to solve for dy dx. So I know that I'm going to have to bring over uh, this term to the other side, uh, keeping it over here with this term as well. And it looks like this term is going to move to the left side of the equation. So I'm going to kind of try and take care of a few things in one step here. I'm going to clean this all up, move it to the left side of the equation, noticing that the sign will change. So I know that's going to become plus when this whole term moves to the other side. Plus, I've got the 2 times the 3, I've got the 6, I've got an x squared and a y squared, and the dy dx factor. Otherwise, it wouldn't be on the left side of the equation. So this term is a result of cleaning this up and moving it to the left side of the equation. The 6x squared will come from my moving this term over to the other side and cleaning this up. Looks like minus 4xy cubed. Almost there. Okay, these two terms both share the common factor of dy dx, and we're going to take that out. As a final step, I'll divide both sides of the equation by this quantity right here. I said as a final step, although there really is one more step that should be done. As I'm writing this down, I certainly notice that I have a common factor that I can divide out from, not just the ones I pick and choose, not just the terms I pick and choose, but all of the terms in the problem I can divide out into. And something is obvious that should be done. They don't share any variable factors that could be taken. Oh, take out a 2. Take out a 2. That should be a 3. They don't share any variable factors in all four terms. Um, I don't see anything common, any variable common to all four of them. So this would be the answer right here. This is the rate of change. And notice that in order for us to find the slope, of this curve, whatever it's doing, we would need both the x and y coordinate, or at least a way to find both the x and y coordinate. All 
Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at um, uh, a, a problem that um, we're going to do something a little bit different too. All right, consider a circle centered at the origin with radius 5. So the equation for that circle centered at the origin with radius 5 would look something like this. Okay, I'm going to mix it up a little bit on this. We're going to be asked to find this in terms of x and y. Given this equation, find this in terms of x and y. Well, what is this? Uh, based on what we saw earlier, this is going to be notation that represents the second derivative. So not only am I going to find the first derivative, after I get that I have to find the second derivative, but I also need to keep in mind that I want to put my answer in terms of x and y. That probably doesn't have any meaning for you right now, but here in a minute I'll refer back to this. Alright, well in order for us to find the second derivative we have to begin to find the first derivative. You don't have to show these arrows, I'm just doing it to keep myself on, on track here. This derivative would be 2x plus variables disagree, so it would be 2y times dy dx, and this derivative is 0. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and isolate dy dx. I'm going to get dy dx by itself, and then I'm going to bring in the derivative operator again to find the next derivative. So I'm going to subtract a 2x and divide by 2y. So subtracting a 2x and dividing by 2y results in a negative x over y. Alright. Okay, so let's bring in the derivative operator again to produce that second derivative notation. So bringing d over dx in again, because that's what we're doing. The result of that is the second derivative, the second derivative of y with respect to x a second time equals, okay, now over here when we go to differentiate this quotient, I can either use the quotient rule, which I'm going to do, or you can bring the y up and make it a product of negative x, y to the negative 1. I'm just not a big fan of differentiating with negative exponents, so if it's a quotient, I'm probably, chances are I'm going to jump into the quotient rule. So here we go, quotient rule to find the second derivative. So I'm on my way to finding this next derivative. So I know I start building the answer by squaring the denominator of the problem, and then beginning the numerator with that denominator, and saying it's the denominator times the derivative with respect to x of the numerator. And I'm going to go ahead and let this negative x belong to the x. Minus for the quotient rule, the numerator, which is negative x, times the derivative of the denominator, which looks like this. So a little bit of cleanup here. So in the numerator, I need to perform this calculation. That's negative 1. So negative 1y, or just negative y. Subtracting this term, I'm going to go ahead and change it to addition and change that to plus. So I'm going to have plus. Okay, well, the derivative of y with respect to x is just dy dx. So I'm going to have plus x times dy over dx. I think I'm going to work to the right just a little bit and then write down. Okay, so you're finished finding the second derivative. I just haven't completed the process in which they want me to find that second derivative. I found the second derivative. I'm finished. Now, if they had not mentioned in terms of x and y, I'd be done. But what they want is just your answer for your second derivative to have only x's and y's, not y primes. And that's clearly what this is, is a y prime. So, an easy fix. You've got to get rid of dy dx. 
Well, I already know what dy dx is from back up here. dy dx was equal to negative x over y. Now you've actually completed what they requested of you. And the rest is just algebra and cleanup. So here we go. Negative y plus, actually it's going to turn into a minus. Consider this x over 1 minus x squared over y all over y squared. Uh, you can further clean this up and get rid of the complex fraction by multiplying by y over y, a form of 1, which means you're going to have to multiply everything in this expression by y. So I'm coming back down here. So y times negative y is negative y squared. Uh, y times this fraction would result in the y's canceling and you having minus x squared. And the result of multiplying in the denominator is y cubed. Okay, So I think this was a minus. Um, you really were finished up here with the requested information. This is algebra. You need to be aware of that. Uh, this is cleanup. One more thing that's interesting. You could factor out the negative from the numerator resulting in x squared plus y squared. Just rearranged. I just rearranged. That's all. Think about distributing and getting back to this. Um, and just did this because of a connection to the original problem. Okay, looking back at the original problem, x squared plus y squared was equal to 25. So a really simplified answer would look like negative, 20, negative 25 over y cubed. Again, as I mentioned, anything from here on down would be considered the correct calculus answer. Well, where do you have to go to? Well, if it's multiple choice and none of these are there, uh, but this is, you would need to be able to, to, to travel through all this to get to here. All right? So for me, you know, maybe a little cleanup. You can stop here. Uh, certainly would look neat if you go here or even to this point right here. Well, this has been some examples with implicit differentiation, and so I, I hope it's helped uh, with any questions that you might have had. And if not, we'll address them in class. See you soon.